have to make So it's quite quite extraordinary. Thank you. The second set of tanks is to Mrs. Patton, the vessel, who produced that one that belongs to the American Foundation, and they wanted this thing in English. He worked night and day over, over a weekend to produce it. Ultimately, we didn't end up getting the money. But um, nevertheless, uh, enormous amounts, uh, amounts of gratitude due to a man who is not here to receive it in person. But we hope that you would uh, please pass it on to him. I will give him my best. Wonderful. That's... <laughs> the next thing is that um, I want to thank all of you. Because whenever you pick peop in a cell, ask people who you've not even met or know through a reputation and ask them to contribute something. You never know what you're going to get. Um, first of all, thank you for actually all delivering your papers so that we could pre-read them. Um, it's about the first or the second time in my life that that's actually happened. And uh, it's enormous because it's extremely useful to actually come in having read it. To me personally, um, it is enormously instructive and useful. The other really amazing thing that has occurred is that everybody stuck to their 30 minutes of time. Without any prompting, there was, there was not even one instance when there was an embarrassed paper being pushed and people wanting to grab more time. No one did that. This is an extraordinary spirit of generosity and collegiality, uh, which I wish it was more widespread in academia. You're all special, and I, I wish you, uh, I'm very grateful to you, and congratulate yourselves too for the generosity with which you did it. Just this last session was an example wherein our chair basically uh, gave us time limits and everybody stuck to it. So it is quite, quite amazing. Um, last quick announcement before I go into the publication bit uh, is that after this session's done, there is a kind of an impromptu idea, uh, Natasha, where is she, uh, might lead us into, some, into a bar where we can ostensibly uh, listen to some good music and drink some good... Precious bars are famous. So we will leave it to her to guide us on where, where we might go. And that she'll tell us later on after this is done. So wait for her announcement at the end. All right, now let's get down to the project, the book project, and then I'll hand it over to Lise. Uh, I want to make a few comments. One of them is that it's important to bear in mind the theme of BRICS as opposed to merely a collection of countries. Um, it could be any set of countries. The importance of BRICS is the economic power, the scale effect, um, the fact that there is a large international attempt at trying to build equity markets in these countries. And the question really is, what are the social and environmental consequences of this? We ask the question for each of you as historians to respond to this question from a point of view of historians. Neither Lee nor I want to straightjacket, having invited all of you given that you're all experts in your own respective fields and distinguished scholars, to straightjacket you into one kind of narrative form. We don't want to do that. Um, I have gone around to each of you giving individual comments during, as a response to papers. Everybody's got it. Um, but having done that, and I'm also going to do two other things in the next coming days, um, I'm going to follow up these individual comments with actually written individual comments. So everybody, I'm going to do one paper a day, so in the next 15 days, everyone would have received a page, one page from me, with sort of detailed comments that you can take. Now, remember that this is done in a spirit of dialogue. You don't have to take anything. Or you can take some of it. You don't need to take any of it. It's just suggestions. I mean, we're not trying to second guess you. It's just an attempt at trying to give some editorial direction and input. But ultimately, you're the author. We respect you. And we recognize that you're able to, quite capable of producing something extraordinary. And we're looking forward to that. Um, 
It's also meant to be mentioned that, uh, it's important to mention that uh, um, we, you know, as long as you've addressed the broader theme of BRICS, do it in any way you want. The one thing that did occur to me later on, in fact, I wrote it down almost as an afterthought, is that we, it might be useful also to look at the impact that each of our countries' policies have had in other countries. Um, now, I love Russia. I'm a very great Russia feel, feel. But as somebody who is not great, greatly fond of big dams, one of the most offensive big dams in India, it's a Terry Dam, which, uh, is, which I could talk about at length and have written about as well, um, was only possible because it's a debt project. It is only revived because the Soviets came in with a ton of money um, and, react, uh, and, and, and a technology to go with it and revive the project out of the blue. Or in other words, what we do have coll you know, collateral damages impacts in other countries. So that, 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 that issue of the impact of our respective countries is something that we can look at. I certainly am going to bring it into my paper by looking at India, Nepal, and other countries as well, because there's a big impact that my country is doing, essentially. All right. That's the first point. So collective dialogue, respond to BRICS, do it in any way you want. I'll send you individual comments. At the end of it, I'm also going to give a broad collective comment, collecting all the individual pieces and giving a broader thought piece, just to, for what it's worth. Second, the structure of the book. The, here's what the book, I think such a book needs to be curated. It's like a good, no, I mean, you can have a museum with a collection of art, but those, the things that actually work are those that are curated well. They're the ones that last. We're trying to go for a big, a big uh, impact publisher like Cambridge University Press, ideally in the environmental history series, uh, but they're a big ask. Um, they don't like edited books, generally speaking. They do them only when the, the sum is, the collective is more than the individual parts. So it's, the onus is on us to really produce that collective. To that end, I'm going to do a framing document, which I'll send you the, the proxy introduction. And I'd like your feedback on the introduction so that we can incorporate it. And some of what we're doing today is also feeding into this process, essentially. We don't want it just to be top down, but bottom up as well. So please keep feeding in things and uh, giving it to us so we can incorporate all your ideas into this. Um, we're also going to do introductions for each section. So it's not just going to be one general introduction, and that's the end of it. Each section, historiography, state, civil society, is also going to be introduced. I'm going to fill in gaps. I'm going to sort of draw out issues. I'm also going to do a conclusion. So it really reads like a real book at the end of it. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of effort that Lisa and I are going to put in to actually producing and curating a book that's much better and greater than some of its parts. I think it's a highly important project because we are at the beginning of something really big in world history. In world historical terms, Yes, there is ISIS and terrorism on the other hand. And then there is BRICS, the era, business of cooperation, economic development, and so on. I think we should celebrate this as much as question it and engage with it. And for that, it needs to be curated well, and that's a process that we're going to be doing. The next point is about the length of your papers. I never did this. I should have done this. But when you do a simple math, you realize that there are 15 papers. If each paper is even 6,000 words, and most papers here are not, it's 90,000 words, which is already touching the boundaries of what publishers are going to accept. So what I'm going to, we're going, this is going to be a very hard ask, I think, but I'm going to ask people to try and keep their papers between five and 6,000 words. Just, um, just to, hit, to have, for the Brazilians, because you don't work on, on words, uh, this number of words, something around uh, 350, 400 uh, pages. So to get someone to publish an edited volume with 400 pages, it's not that easy. Not an easy task. But even Brazilians have word processors, and the word processors do have words in them. Yes. So, you know, so urging, I know, I know. I'm urging you to look at the word processor and look at its word thing. So try and keep it to five, five including bibliography, by the way. So try and keep it to between 5,000 and 6,000 6, 6, words. We know some will be on the lower end, others will be on the higher end. That's fine. And we'll work with what's there. And there'll be an editorial process. If there are cuts to be made, I will make it, give it to you back. We will not go to publication without getting your okay on anything, so uh, that's a commitment from me. All right, next thing, timeline. Um, in order to do this curatorial kind of process, uh, what we'd like to do is, after you receive my comments, or you can even begin right now, um, I'd like, what we'd like to see is a kind of a first draft. Now, let's just get the, let's get the argument together. It doesn't need to have the footnotes right, it doesn't need to have the style right, but the argument, if it's all together in a narrative that makes sense, Try and get that to me sooner rather than later. 
And the ultimate sort of real deadline that we're pushing for is the middle of October, which is about six weeks. Having edited books in the past, I've found that once you go past this deadline, the book lingers, and it's usually one person who drags on into a project. The BRICS project is a very timely one. If you don't get this done soon, someone else is going to do it, or it's going to become too obsolete. So we really have to go on a very tight ship. It, more importantly, Cambridge is expecting the book in December um, to review it. So what this means is that um, I'd like the first draft in October. I will turn it around within a week to 10 days with comments, at which point you incorporate what you want. It's up to you to exercise your control. It's your paper. You take whatever you want. But the, the crucial portion from mid-October to December is really the formatting, right? the style and all that. Now, in other words, to get the footnotes aligned and so on. Now, at this point, there's one important point to be made, which is although we're going for Cambridge as the first target, there's always a possibility they'll turn us down. So we have a plan B and a plan C. I have other leading presses lined up who are willing to consider this book. But, in, but the style sheets change. The, the, the style that Cambridge University Press follows is different from what Rutledge follows. So what I'm going to ask you to do in order to be flexible is use a footnote formatting software like whatever you use, EndNote or whatever you, you might use, so that you can change the styles later on if you want to. It makes it easier to do that. So to save you a lot of trouble, I'm not going to insist on any particular style initially because we don't know what the final one's going to be. Um, but just keep the narrative going. That's what you focus on. Don't worry about style. Don't worry about anything else. But just work with the word processor so you can spit it out in any style you want. It doesn't matter. And then later on, when it becomes clearer that it's going to be Cambridge University Press, you can quickly change it and just format it and spit it out. All right? In any case, I'm going to sit and read and edit every paper carefully before we actually send it to the press because I don't, I've had two situations where I've had uh, edited books in which Reviewers have basically ignored the argument, and they've said things like, oh, it's very badly edited. And that becomes a very bad kind of commentary. So I'm not going to give anybody an excuse to make arguments that there are editorial or stylistic mistakes. I'm going to very tightly edit this. You had something to say? No, 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 it's just to... Okay, speed me on. Okay, quick, two more quick things. One of them is photographs. Um, this, we are historians. We're dealing with some lovely material from archives, some of which came out. I mean, a lot of people presented some nice pictures. Select two or three from them and include them with your essay with some captions to go with it. Uh, the more illustrated it is, the, the more historical a book it appears. And it's more imp interesting to read it. So try and have at least one or two photographs, and I will fight till my death to try and include these photographs in the book. I know the editors hate it, but publishers hate it, but we'll try and get them in. At least one picture a paper. You know, make sure that you select a picture that tells a thousand words. We also need a photograph or two, or maybe five, that illustrates the cover and makes the point that we're trying to make. So again, if you have ideas for the cover, send them. Uh, we may, I mean, we'll, we'll, let's, we'll, we, we, I'll even send the pictures around. We can collectively choose it. It's possible, for example, that more than one might be chosen. We'll go through that process also very democratically. But send pictures that you think are important, and we'll, we'll go with that. And last but by no means least, um, we're all using interpretive frameworks to talk, uh, to do our essays. So if you have an article or a paper or two that you find that's compelling to you, that's really useful for you to frame your argument, we'd like to read it too. It'll be useful for us um, to help organize our thoughts. I certainly would. So if there's some article, books, or something that truly informs the way in which you think and which, the way in which you organize your essay, send it to me. Because then I'll A, put it on the, on the web page, in, in the Dropbox, but I'll also, uh, and in the case of a book, I'll put a link in the Dropbox. But the other advantage is that I'll read it. We all, those of us who want to read it can read it, and we'll know where you're coming from. And it'll vastly enrich uh, the languages that we use in the way in which we discuss. And in, in going with this, uh, the last and concluding point before I hand it over to Lise is that we want to expand the website and include bibliographies, actual texts, uh, links to websites, and so on. So if you have material, send them to us. I'll actually describe a process. Uh, I'll, have, I'll send you an email in which I'll show you, if you have an article, how to upload it uh, into a particular place. I'm going to create a space for this to make it easy for you at any point update it. The, the importance for this is that it's also useful for us as teaching aids. 
Uh, I know, for example, that I have a world environmental history course. And the next version of it, which is next January, is going to be based on this book. So I'm going to teach this as a course in, 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 in the first iteration. And I'd like to in, incorporate some of the additional material that you have. So I want my students to read original Chinese scholar written articles and so forth you know, in my course. So put it all in, we'll put it in a collective, and it, since it's on the web, other scholars can use it as well. That's it. It's all yours, Lise. Okay, now for more, um, um, what exactly, what, planning for exactly what we are going to do. Uh, first, I would like to, to thank uh, Ravi's word and say, look, uh, he's sharing with me the, the, uh, the personal money that you're putting here, so it was worth it. <laughs> but mostly, uh, my student, we have already thanked my students, it's thank you, I would thank the house, the, the university, etc. But mostly, I think that we all deserve a, a huge thank you to all of us because it was a two-day marathon, very tiring, and everybody engaged with everybody. It was not a kind of conference that, okay, I presented my paper, now I can go. So uh, it was something that everybody was listening to, every single word that everybody was saying, and that's important. And now we are going to finish it in the best po possible way, I hope. As uh, Ravi said, we didn't call the best, the top scholars in the field, just to have them doing a checklist or a boilerplate of a paper. It's not the idea to have all of you writing the same narrative. As Nikolai mentioned, and we are talking to our similarities, but also to our differences and our own expertises. So what we are going to do also, and Sandra and, uh, and Shen had suggested, and I think it's a, a very good idea, uh, Ravi agreed also, we are going to have 30 minutes to meet with people. As we did this, this round table, this debates, we are going to meet with the five people from our um, uh, section, historiography, state, and, um, and civil society, and kind to discuss how can you make our papers, which are different papers, which are, have different backgrounds and different narrative organizations, how can, how can we make them talk to each other? And uh, when I was talking to this to Sandra, she said, well, but this is you and Ravi that uh, are going to decide. And I think that Ravi and I, we agreed that we are reverting this thing. This is not a top-bottom book, at least not completely. What we are planning is that after these 30 minutes, we came up today, think that you're in the classroom, okay? 30 uh, meetings with the, with the group and came up with today a, a bullet list, five, uh, that say how can the papers talk to each other? I know that Paul has already started that. <laughs> and then we are going, that's important for us because the introduction for each session that Ravi was talking about is going to be very much based in this bullet list. So we know what we can expect. So the point is not the editors telling you what, what the sections would like, but we deciding collectively in each one of the groups how we want our papers to talk to each other. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping that we are going to do. We have 30 minutes, you can go to the garden, can stay here. This is a very large room. We can go wherever we want, but we have to be here between 20, 30 minutes. Which uh, is um, 15 minutes past the hour? Or? Yeah, this is 10 minutes before the hour, so it would be about 6.10. Uh, no, 6.20. That's, uh, it's going to be 6.20, right? Between 6.10 and 6.20, if you finish before. It's, please don't feel that you have to discuss a lot, because we have already made the debate. The idea is just to have kind of a brainstorm and have these ideas. Uh, and I found out in, in sometimes that's at least for my students, it's better to give a kind of short, straight time, and they know that they have to, be do, to do it, and then they do. And, and don't worry about making it in the computer or anything, and if later on you want to change something, just send it to, to Haravi and I. But we want to leave today with a kind of a bullet list to have an idea of what these different sections are going to look like, okay? So, and then we can come back here. Um, uh, I can't do Quickly regroup. I mean, like one quickly minute, regroup. One minute each. One minute each to, to read, basically, those, uh, those bullet lists. And you can go dancing with Natasha, okay? Or at least drinking with Natasha. Um, 
so, uh, and of course, I can answer any questions regarding the boat trip tomorrow and, uh, and logistics for tomorrow. But now, let's just find your partners, your five partners, and let's go. And we'll reconvene here at 6.20 or earlier. Any questions regarding the dynamics? Okay, good. Let's, let's go. It. Sorry for taking so long. No, no, it's, long I was just... I'm becoming very nazi about this. Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. but the point is, I'm seeing everybody going down in yeah. terms of yeah, stamina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more we, we delay this thing.